blow your head off nicely. Garcia! Help me! I'll go. Help Can't me! you see the little bitch is coming on to me? Come on to this, pendejo! Oh, <laughs> demon hunter. Your bullets have no bite, no penetration. <laughs> you need more thrust! Diablo says this. That was just the appetizer, Hotspur. A taste of what's in store. So you know my name. And you don't know mine. Please, call me Fleming. Oh, you're not going to get bowdy over one little blonde bombshell? Tell you what, you can have the girl back, but as new. If you atone for your sins against me for slaying my legion of demons, admit that you challenged a greater power and lost. Admit that you're endowments will never measure up to my own. I will admit you're a fucking asshole. How's that, Fleming? <laughs> oh, so be it. A place for Paula has now been set at my table, mortal. You cannot have her back now. But come to my castle in the underworld, and you can still join in our revels. Such a tempting offer. I do love a party. Maybe we could play Pong. Or do shots! <laughs> Say, you slay me, Hotspur, but you don't, you can't. Now say goodbye to Paula. She has a lot of dying to do, and coming back to life, and dying some more. I like to keep my mistresses guessing. Yes, help her! Because in the meantime, I'll be helping myself. to the underworld is stretched out before us doesn't mean we have is to... Is there a problem, Johnson? Well, I'm just saying, demons are buttholes. You really wouldn't like it there. <laughs> Says the former demon. What's wrong? Lost your spy. Uh, okay, okay, look. If you want to go to the underworld, good on you. But you don't know that place. Look, look, look. Look what they did to me. A few little transgressions, and now I'm doomed to an eternity of heavy metal jokes and, and posing for pirate flags. It's only worse for mortals. Then all the more reason to go. They have Paula. So the way I see it, you are either with me, or you are not. No! <sighs> Get on. Vamanos! The underworld lies just beyond the sound barrier. How do you know? That's like super classified demon information. <laughs> Not according to the internet.
This is your old barrio, right, Johnson? Then you can be my tour guide. Me? But I quit the whole demon thing ages ago, and really, my memory's absolute rubbish. Oh, I'm sure it will come back to you in no time. Relax, amigo. This is going to be an adventure. Our very own road movie. And the best part is, you never know what's waiting around the bend. on this side of the door. All right, let's start this road movie with some road kill. That's right, G. Don't let all that peace and quiet push you around. <laughs> when demons hear the name Garcia fucking Hotspur, they run the other way. Johnson, what the hell is that thing? Holy cow! I don't believe it! Willie! That's one-eyed William! Friend of yours? Are you kidding? William is my aunt's first husband's adopted son from the Ukraine. Then you are practically brothers. I can't see shit up ahead. The underworld be a shadowy place. Anyway, not a problem. Take a look over there. You see that lamp? Hanging on the wall? I can light that up for you. The light shot, of course. Give it a try, G. There. Did I brighten your day? What can I say, Johnson? You are the right tool for every job. So when do I get to light up some demons? I'm sure you'll have your chance. They hate my light shot. Leaves a nasty rash. Those white gems, G. These demons are not very talkative. What have they got to talk about? Once your soul rolls into town, that's it. You're damned. And Fleming doesn't let anybody off the hook. He sounds like a real dick. Tater. Johnson, why is there a goat head hanging on the wall? Oh, well, everybody knows that goats are a source of light. Right, of course. Poor Tyke. Most new arrivals in the underworld are condemned to guard doors like this for the first hundred years. Oh, we all have to start somewhere. Garcia? <gasps> Paula? Come back! <laughs> Paula! Easy, G. This place is full of deceptions and dirty tricks. Is that a floating... Strawberry! Oh, gimme, gimme, gimme! Oh, these things are like demon catnip. When I was little... Johnson! 
Do I take this strawberry? Yes! Jeez, excuse me for having a little fruit fantasy. Don't you dare give my strawberry to that sprog on the door! No! Gee, you fairy squanderer! <laughs> ah, drinks! At least there's one good thing about the underworld. What, liver damage? That's the beauty of it. In the underworld, you don't die from drinks. They unkill people here. Paula? Paula? <laughs> ah, que es esta mierda? Uh-oh, I was afraid of this. What? Why is it suddenly getting dark? This isn't ordinary darkness. If you stay in it too long, it'll suck the life out of you. Quick! Use the light shot on the goat head. You can't stay in the darkness like this. It eats away the flesh of mortals. Goat head, How hurry! You know it's in the light shot. Goat would banish the darkness. How did you not know? Some demon hunter, I say. Just warn me if I have to fuck a horse to unlock a door, huh? <laughs> Is that you? I can't see for shit. Ahem. If only there was some way to shed light on the situation. Don't mock me, bitch. Just use the light shot on that lamp. Sorry. <laughs> Themselves. It's what's for dinner. Mother, and not again. And this time there's no goat to save us. <laughs> Quick, the door. Run through the door. <laughs> oh, much better. No darkness, and dare I say it, no demons. Demons do love their darkness. Then why don't they just cover the whole underworld in it? Too much of a good thing can kill you. They say to wear sunblock in your world, right? Same idea. Nice one, G. How'd you know to use the light shot on that demon? Are you sure, tour guide? Out that lingerie. You? In a Chictoria's secret? <coughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Keep running! There's no way to disperse darkness this thick! More darkness dead ahead. At least we're standing on the bright side of things this time. You can call this bright.
I hear bleating. Better check your goat, da. What the fuck is that? Hmm. Let's go with big and hopefully dead demon, shall we? That's right, and vending machines too. If you're damned, you're going to need convenient access to drinks pretty much 24-7. Gem, what does this do? Shh, shh, shh. Keep it down. That's a performance enhancer. Very shady. Very, very illegal. Johnson, do you eat eyeballs too? Perish the thought. It just so happens I'm a fruitarian, thank you. <laughs> These human hearts let you withstand the darkness longer. I'm not even going to ask how that makes sense. So, uh, does Willie always take a big smoky dump in public? <laughs> You should see him piss. At least we can keep track of where we've been this way. Demons can't stand light. Gotta put it all somewhere, you know? Barrels. I can see they gave the problem a lot of thought. Here's a fine mess. These demon pubes are blocking the door. Hey, look up there. There's a switch glowing the same color. Hold on. What? Where else have we seen that color? You reckon taking a walk on the wild side might bring this whole situation into perspective? Puzzles. 
Please, Angel, wait for me. Hijo de puta. <laughs> Cute trick. Again. What's that fucker's fucking hand doing here? Um, it's his world. Nothing's out of Fleming's reach. He's literally got a finger in every pie. We're surrounded, Jim. Wait, did he use these barrels? They're filled with pressurized light. They'll explode. any demons try to challenge Fleming? You know, like a coup? <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know what happened to the last demon who tried that? No. Neither do I, G. All they found was a shish kebab with two ears, two eyes, two kidneys, and two... Uh, never mind. Trying to bring down the house. Dead alert, G. That corpse is reacting to the darkness. Light this place up before it spawns more demons. Some kind of diagram? I don't know. You leave town for a few demon centuries and suddenly there's all this amazing new technology when you get back.
Should I be afraid of a few puny earthquakes? What the hell? Are you afraid of that? Shit. Nice to be noticed, huh? No! Stronger demons require a constant supply of human blood, which they store in special repositories on their bodies. They're a source of great power, but also an exploitable weakness. Talk about wearing your heart on your sleeve. understand why brains and eyes are on the menu, but why do demons like strawberries? You don't know about strawberries? <laughs> They're demon fruit, G. Fleming's idea of a practical joke on the world of the living. They're made of ground-up tongues. That's disgusting. That's not the half of it. You thought Pop Her Cherry was just a figure of speech. <laughs> Looks like a VIP. Very important, pendejo. Something like that. Fleming gives his favorite souls special treatment. People who exited the world of the living in style. So not all demons are damned? Oh, everybody's damned. The VIPs are just comfortably damned. Little perks here and there. Such as... They get to keep their genitals. Find some darkness that gives us a clear shot of the switch. Aha. 
hand that baths darkness. And they said this neighbourhood was gentrifying. my love. Paula, where are you? What the fuck? Paula. Smell like Paul, unless she stopped showering. <laughs>
You came to save me. Angel. Look out, G! It's a trap! What the shit? Demons like men, Garcia. They all try to get inside the prettiest girl. Sick! These twisted demons! Yes, well, that's the reason I left. Fuck this pendejo! If Mr. Man on Monster wants to play, magnificent. around here somewhere. Anybody home? Show yourself, Hell Monkey. I think he's scared of you. He should be, Jay. He should be. Shove it into my face, G. Trust me, it doesn't mean we're engaged or anything. Might be a tight fit, but okay. So what exactly did that do? Blue gems let me transform into new tools of war. New gears of me. In other words... A new weapon. Magnifico. You know, I bet all the VIPs are walking around with blue gem. You 
know I found Paula in a dumpster, right? What? You said you met her at the supermarket. I did. It was the bin out behind the dime a dozen. And you just picked her up out of the rubbish and brought her home? Why no? Sometimes I think I hardly know you. What is that? I don't know, but we've got company, as in lots of. Well, if they pull up a chair, I would be happy to beat them with it. The man who never had his fill. It was a cold and snowy eve. Certainly no night for a man without a home to be walking these grey and endless streets. Inside the pizza parlour, George Reed spun a lively tune on his harmonica. The local children giggled and pointed excitedly at the harmonica man as their parents glowed with approval. His reward would be all the pizza he could eat, six pies at least, and a warm bed in one of these folks' homes. He knew they were good for it. But when he tucked in for the night, George had not had his fill. As the years and calories stacked up, most men would have got older and fatter. Yet for all he consumed, George only got thinner as he washed from town to town. Tapeworm! Tonight, he plied his trade with some grannies and orderlies in a nursing home. hoo -ha! His harmonica filled the room with joy. After devouring three helpings of pork chops and mashed potatoes, he eyed the plate of the old woman next to him. Juice dribbled down his chin. Go ahead, Georgie, she said. You're such a good boy, you shouldn't have to starve. But George had not had his fill. Early the next morning, he was already on the freeway with his thumb in the air. Where are you headed? said the man in the truck. Nowhere, said George. Anywhere. It was a new decade, and tonight George played to an all but empty bar in the city. He had lost a lot of weight. Afterwards, the only woman in the joint took the stool next to him and asked him his name. The bartender leaned over the counter. You don't know this guy, Mary. George is famous, being all over the tri-state area. With a wink, he added, man's insatiable. And that night, George proved it as he buried his face in Mary's beaver. Holy woodland creatures! Had a boy, George! Had a boy, George! Play that harmonica, she purred. But even after five trips to heaven and back, he had not had his fill. The morning after was an awkward affair as they stared at each other over coffee. One wanted to feel more, the other just wanted to feel. In his final days, George was all skin and bones. I can relate, except for the skin part. His last meal had been a mistake. It was on a sidewalk one night in a small suburban town that he came across the boy. Hungrily, and with an agonised grimace, he opened his mouth to beg for help. <laughs> Out came a cacophony of wheezes and toots, but the boy understood. Wait, you mean Jorge ate his harmonica? Once he was alone, George Reed looked at the candy bar he held in one hand and began to cry. <laughs> They found George's half-eaten body in a market next town over. In one hand, he held a knife. In the other, a fork. Chunks of flesh had been torn from his chest and his arms. Blood framed an eerie smile. 
The wind that morning blew fierce, and as it whistled through the hole he'd carved out of his own neck, the harmonica man played his last song in this world. There were gawkers, and many knew him. They shared stories of how he'd filled them with hope, filled them with life. They, at least, had had their fill. <clears throat> Especially Mary. The end. Our goat. Then let's put out some light. Would you kindly bust a cap in those mother fudges before they douse the lights? talking about you kidnapping Paula. I didn't kidnap her. You hauled her out of a skip. Isn't that illegal in some states? What does she say? Nothing. Not for weeks. I was afraid to even touch her, you know? Like she didn't belong to me. To anyone. But something changed. There was a phone call. Um, speaking of phones, put that on hold, G. We've got company. <laughs> Suddenly, she slams her fork down and says, Don't answer it! Creepy. First thing she ever said to me. But I got up to take the call. Johnson, you should have seen her. She jumped out of her chair, ran to the phone, and ripped it right off the wall. Wow. Then she came and put her arms around me and started crying. It was the craziest, weirdest, sexiest thing I have ever seen. And there's ever since... What? Demons don't like teeth? The gun laws here are very strict. Haven't you wondered why they don't shoot back? You and I are violating almost every rule in the book. Heck, I'm practically made of teeth. Calls? No, sir. Maybe it's from Paula. Or at least someone with answers. Dios mío. Paula, is that you? 
When will this fucking torture end? From hottie to hamburger, just like that. We could use these to chase away the darkness, at least in short bursts. Just look at them. Fiery sprinkles in a great big chocolatey sky. Johnson, shut up. Darkness! What the shit is that? Let's take a closer look. Well, hi ho Name's Christopher. Now, don't y'all be afraid. I ain't gonna bite. Trust me. You see, I'm what you call a mixture of beast and human. Oh, best of both worlds, my pappy said. But what are you doing around these parts? Ain't you a mortal? Why should I tell you? All I see is demon. Well, shucks. You gotta look underneath the leathery exterior. Deep down, I am a sensitive and understanding listener. Some asswipe named Fleming stole my girl and took her to his castle. I am here to take her back. Meaning you are on a quest to kick the Prince of Evil's ass? Holy shit! <laughs> oh, I want in on some of this action. How can I help, huh? How can I? 
Well, I hope that you're offering more than just enthusiasm. I tell you what, I get pretty hungry, and I just love her of them white gems. <laughs> you get enough of those, and we can trade. With the right incentive, I might even be able to introduce you to some real product. Know what I mean? <laughs> Magnifico. Okay. Then chuck them sparklies right down the hatch. <laughs> Go on, feed me! Ah! Hidey ho, if it ain't my bestest buddies. I'm surprised Christopher hasn't had a visit from the GEA. Yeah, you read about gem bus all the time. See y'all real soon. Whoa, what's this? Sushi with a dick? These guys may look ugly, but they're actually quite useful. Are they friendly? Yes, I kept one as a pet. Hit them with light, and they'll keep you safe. Really? I had no idea. No, there isn't. No need to get snippy. It's just this wasn't here before. Since when do demons get buried? Since I came to town. Whoa! Who did this? Mr. X! Only a demon hunter could kill this many and not be lying dead next to them. And I promised we would be buried together. Any suggestions? Aim for the head! Not that you really have a choice. <laughs> Shoot the red spots. Where is a gold when you need one? Okay, okay. Crazy idea, G. 
What if we use that chandelier? <laughs> me or are these crystals a bit phallic <laughs> you're one to talk Idea. For one you pulled out of your ass. Wrong. I don't have an ass. Get here so fast, y'all rode the chandelier, didn't you? Y'all 
Take care now. It sounds like a cat having sex with a harmonica, and not the consensual kind. Hey, every demon has the right to pick the music for his own funeral. The excrement is really hitting the proverbial fan here, G. I'm what you might call concerned. Me too. Concerned this kill is gonna be over too quickly. <laughs> might I suggest we not just stand here? Before you die, demon scum, I will carve my name into your flesh. That name... Is Garcia Hotspur, hunter of demons and slayer of Cameroons like you?
here's a pretty prize. Mm-hmm, I smell an upgrade. Plug it in, G. Don't tell me he works for Fleming, too. He? The sister's grimmer female, G. There's more than one? They're Fleming's adopted daughters. He treats them special. The story goes they were stunningly attractive maidens in their previous life who met with an unjust demise. Fleming, being a connoisseur of all things foxy and female, took pity and made them the only beings in all the underworld who can slay demons for good. Let them dole out the justice they never got, know what I mean? He should have thought long term. Beauty is only skin deep, and that bitch has no skin. You demon bitch! Shh! Have you got a death wish? What did I tell you? The sisters Grimm can kill anybody, even demons. No one's safe from their sides. Least of all loud people. Poster. I guess I made Fleming mad. Magnifico. Who says it's Fleming? You've been ticking off demons on a professional level long before he entered the picture. How about a little shopping? And the action. That was incredible. Y'all lived wait. <laughs> Y'all take care now. G. And see the darkness rising up to kill us? I will try not to. Let me 
King's castle again. Does it have a name? Well, officially he calls it Castle Gulzak Zabar Electorahe Ray. But most of the locals just call it the Castle of Hassle. Because he hassles them all the time? Oh, because it's a hassle to get there. No, because it's a hassle to say the real fudging name. If I ever get my own castle, let me assure you. Shh. What's that? <laughs> I hope you're good at apologies, G. <laughs> Here comes a whole new world.
Grim's greatest fear is hot flashes. Look how menopause treated her. 
cracks with your explosive hot boner. You heard me. I see trees. Oh, please tell me we're out of that gosh awful town. Shit on a stick! 
Ah! I thought we were done with him! has thighs like this. Maybe I should get its phone number. <laughs> Fucking mind games. Paula, keep treading water, baby! Head back to that gate. Hell monkeys in cages. We need darkness if we are going to shoot at that switch. Well, maybe those hell monkeys in cages could give us a hand. Uh, leg. Uh, whatever. Thank <laughs> you. 
like more of those giant demons. Here comes the kicker. Whoa, would you look at that? The darkness really did a number on that fruit. Boy, for a second there, I thought we were... Ew, gross! Are those demons crawling out of his... Not cool.
It's me, Angel. Yes, G, it's you, but is that her? Who wears garters into a swamp? smell like a possum's a-hole. Y'all take care now. has gone mental. She's always been crazy. That is why I love her. But she never gets mad at you. Oh, she gets mad. One morning, after a bout of passionate lovemaking, she was making us coffee just to get a reaction. I told her I was married. You were being funny? Yeah. A practical joke, you know? Chicks love those. Paula was so angry, she grabbed a knife and chased me all over the apartment. She is scary with a knife. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
was a pretty prize. Mm -hmm, I smell an upgrade. Plug it in, G. Pescados locos have taken a shine to us. Stay in the light. We can't see their eyes if they're wearing a mask.
Why do I feel like I'm in a movie? What, were you raised in a barn? Good to know we have the same tastes. Legend of the Stinky Crow. Call, call. For nearly 14 years, his mind had been soaring miles above. But Elliot Thomas was still stuck down on Earth in the boring town of Sinchester. Sinchester. Sinster. What? It's pronounced Sinster. How do you know? My cousin's from Sinster. Don't, never mind. Keep going. <sighs> Alone in his treehouse, he glued feathers to his wing suit, readying himself for the day he would join the Phoenixes and Quetzalcoatls in the sky. Dinner time, cried his mother from their house across the yard. Elliot sat at the center of the table. A TV dinner was challenged his... B.O. as the dominant smell in the room. <laughs> On his left, his mother yammered about her day at the ER. On his right, his father was absorbed in his smartphone. As for Elliot, his eyes were fixed on the ceiling fan. The most fascinating personality within a ten-foot radius. In home room the next day, Justin Schmakowski threw a crappy paper airplane at him. Within seconds, Elliot had built a superior vessel. He stood up on his chair and swiftly launched the Papier Flieger. What? At his unsuspecting enemy. Go, Papier Flieger, go! Zoom, splort, splort. The marvel of paper aviation lodged itself in Justin's tender eyeball. <laughs> Mr. Thomas bellowed their teacher. Go to the principal's office. Later that day, Elliot was cooing quietly to himself as he bought a candy bar in the lobby. Casey Wichtitz was smoking nearby and sneered at him. You'll never fly, stinky crow, she laughed. Why don't you go jack off to some bird porn? <laughs> I bet you do more fapping than flapping. Hey, that's pretty good. Fuck you, screeched Elliot as he ran for the door. It was dark out by the time Elliot meandered home. On the sidewalk, he passed a gaunt man who stared at him in Intently, desperately even. Uh-oh, stranger danger. The man opened his mouth and said, Uviwa, Uviza. What the fuck? Elliot had planned to eat his candy bar tonight while he finished his masterpiece, but he instead held it out to the man. I know what you mean, he replied. 
The schoolyard was packed the next morning as Elliot's classmates waited for first bell. Go, go! As one, the students turned toward the gate and saw Elliot dressed head to toe in his wingsuit. After a moment of shock, they burst into laughter. But they were already far below him. He swooped through their midst and into the school. Call, call! He bounded through the halls, zigzagged up the stairwell. Gah! The school let out a collective gasp when they saw a stinky crow on the roof. With a triumph, Vant snap. He spread his wings, and a moment later, he had leapt. The next two seconds were the most beautiful of Elliot's entire life. He could feel their eyes upon him. He was flying, and their awe was keeping him aloft. Ten minutes later, as guidance counselors wiped bits of Elliot off sobbing students, and the police struggled to piece together the story you are reading now. Elliot's teacher looked down at the wreckage of the boy on the pavement and never forgot what he saw. One bloody hand had formed a peace sign. The other was giving him the finger. It's like an Alanis Morissette song. The end. Okay, lovely. I don't think I'll sleep for weeks. <laughs> Get out, cojones. She just loves you to pieces. Run! Look, there's a key. We'd better kill all the demons in case they've got more. Since you and me are on the same line of work. <laughs> Wasting hell monkeys? Who says it's work? Uh-huh. Just stay out of my way, friendo. I'm in a hurry. Hurry to do what? Mind your own fucking business. Fine. You stay out of my way. As long as I stay out of yours. Good. Hard men like us don't mix. 
Wait, 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 wait. Who's that a comma? Hard like hardened. Experienced. Just forget it. I don't think I ever will. Now, if you'll excuse me. Have fun. Just remember. I stay out of your way. You stay out of mine. Bingo. Look, G, what are those newspaper articles? It says, local woman dies in grisly murder. Maria Dominico, a native of Langosta, was found dead early Thursday morning outside her suburban home. She was 29 years old. According to local police, her skin... <gasps> her skin has been completely removed. Good Lord. She is survived by her husband, Colonel... Hmm, that's weird. The name has been X'd out. <laughs> Paula, I swear I'm coming! Garcia, I don't think I can make it. <laughs> Fuck! Fuck you! You dickwad! Fuck you! Out of my way! This one's mine! <laughs> The one I loved was taken away by this fiend. I don't know why she died, but that question no longer concerns me. All I want now is to have her back. But I have the deep feeling that's not gonna happen. Because the flesh that hangs from this fucker's body looks all too familiar. This is your death, hell beast! Hard man. Fuck! 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 Here I come, fucker! Magnifico. Go on, G. I'm ready for insertion.
bombs to start World War III, I tell you what. Have betrayals. <laughs> <laughs> nearly indestructible. No, he was weak. See what's left of him. You will not become chopped meat if you are stronger than they are. This hell monkey needs to face a real hunter. Between socially maladjusted and dear Abby, I just ingested my own heart. Before you die, demons come. I will carve my name in your flesh. That name. Is Garcia fucking Hotspur, hunter of demons, and slayer of pendejos like you?
let's take a closer look at that billboard over there. This is an ad for Angel's Kiss. What's that? Only the hottest hostess club in the underworld, G. The honeys there used to give the most lovely boo jobs before I f***ed them in their <laughs> sockets. <laughs> of course, this is when I still have fleshy parts. Johnson, that's sick. Just get me to a phone. This boner needs a booster. Now that's my kind of advertising. Oh, let's dive in. Know about this. surrounded by giant hell monkeys. They'll cream us if we get too close. Quick, take me over to that phone. Right now? Trust me, G. <sighs> Thanks for calling Angel Kiss, sugar. I'm not wearing anything but a smile. <laughs> Oh my god, 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 shoing, shoing, shoing! Now that is a big boner. All right, Johnson, let's take this pole for a stroll. Awaits between those poster board legs. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! 
god, oh my god, oh my god, show it, show it, show it!
like herpes. <laughs> Not that I know. <laughs> Vámonos. Look at this! We're flat as paper! It's like we're in our very own toy theatre! No one toys with me. Thank <laughs> you. 
to believe that singing she-devil would ever crack a book. Naputa wants to see if we have the balls to follow her. Well, I think I can <clears throat> keep it up. Ah, uh, dear my Johnson. Look alive. We've got company. Danger in the stacks, G. These baddies can teleport. Decimate them. Come on, that diva bitch is going to lead us straight to Paula. Why would the hell monkeys bother building a library? Have you forgotten about those storybooks we found? Demons love a well-spun tale every bit as much as humans. So what is your favorite demon story? Oh, that's easy. The Unbreakable Huntress. Ah, 
Here we are, an artist's rendition of the Unbreakable Huntress. Lots of demon hunters have challenged Fleming over the years, and while some of them were legends like you, Garcia, very few of them were women. Well, that makes sense. It takes a lot of grip strength to hold on to a hunter's manly equipment. Don't be sexist, Gene. The ladies I've known had more than enough grip strength to hold on to my... <clears throat> Do you want to hear this story or not? Oh, by all means. Once upon a time, there was a proud and beautiful demon huntress, the first woman of her profession. Dressed in red and armed to the teeth, she fought her way to the Lord of the Dead's castle. What arrogance! How dare you challenge me! bellowed the Lord of the Dead. The last thing I expect is a challenge, the huntress answered. <laughs> I like her already. <coughs> I bet she'd be fun in the sack if she weren't so keen on eviscerating us. Just saying. Hmm. We need to find a way over to the other balcony. I think we could use the light shot to rearrange those shelves and make a bridge. Where was I? Ah, yes. The Huntress had insulted the Lord of the Dead, and now his eyes glowed. Some say from rage, others from passion. You are bolder than the other hunters, he said. But even a woman's pride can be broken. There was a flash of steel and a spray of red as both the Huntress's arms tumbled from her body. She screamed. Tears welled up in her eyes. Never had she known such pain. But she would not be deterred and continued walking toward her adversary. With a devilish grin, the Lord of the Dead lopped off the Huntress's legs one at a time. Thwoop! Thwoop! Again, she screamed in pain as her torso flopped onto the floor. She could feel his breath as he hovered over her. I could take you right here and now. <laughs> the fists on her severed arms clenched in resistance. Through her tears, she replied, You might take me, but you will never have me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 
magnífico. What happened to the Huntress? Well, so impressed was the Lord of the Dead that he put her back together and made her his queen. Time and again he killed her, just to take pleasure in her proud refusal to be dead. But they say she's never stopped trying to claw her way back to the world of the living, where she knows she truly belongs. Isn't that a great story? 
Her courage is what inspired me to seek my own freedom. <laughs> she sounds like one hell of a woman. Psychopomp and circumstance. It was her turn to fetch the water, and Maris Grimm was determined to be done with it as soon as possible. Bucket in hand, she made her way down to the well by the wheat field. She and her two elder sisters were all beautiful, but on this windy day, Maris outshone them all. She was in love. Whoosh. The wheat bowed a greeting as the breeze caught it. And a good day to you, Maris giggled as her nipples responded to the weather and thoughts of her lover. My word, what is this storybook rated? <clears throat> she wound a pail of water to the top of the well, but no sooner had she grabbed the rope than she felt a sharp tug, lost her balance, and went tumbling into the gloom head first. Mother Fudge! Mother Fudge! cried Maris. An hour later, the sun sat lower in the sky as two figures approached the well. One was Maris's older sister, Colleen, and she was very concerned. The other was their faithful collie, Ow Ow. Help me! cried Maris from the bottom of the well. But as Colleen grabbed the rope to pull her sister up, she too was yanked into the darkness below. Well, that sucks. Ow Ow! Go get help, boy! cried Colleen. Oof! woofed Ow Ow in response. But because he was a stupid collie, he instead grabbed the loose end of the rope and began to tug valiantly. Crack a boom! 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 Suddenly, a freak bolt of lightning lanced down from the sky and hit poor Ow Ow, causing the pooch to explode in a crimson blossom of slippery Ow Ow giblets. Poor stupid Ow Ow. Stupid is right. My pet was smarter. Shh! Keep breathing. It was well after dark, and Maris and Colleen had all but given up hope when their eldest and wisest sister, Giltine, arrived on the scene. Where are you, sister? was all she managed to utter ere she slipped on Ow Ow's unctuous leftovers and fell down, down, down into the wicked well. Plonkety rascal rabbitness. And with that, the sisters Grimm vanished from the world for seven full years. When they returned, they served a new master who had been smitten by their beauty. Though that beauty faded, his gift to them was theirs forever. The power to end lives as abruptly as fate had ended their own. The end. Oh, I was hoping we'd find out why they all sound like men. Think they will ever write a book about us, Johnson? Honestly, I see you as more of a comic book hero. And anyway, it just so happens I've already been immortalized in prose. Really? What is this book called? Big bullets and the pretty testicles. I am sorry I ask.
I'm not falling for that sexy bullshit. And I'm only at half mast. Now you bring my angel out here before I get massage. Massage your knee. Give Fuck! <laughs> Dear, I think the eldest sister Grimm is just a bit angry with. Oh, 
Go, you singing cunt! I'm coming, baby! After her G-cakes!
Sure hope your girlfriend's more stable than that deranged blonde. Another paper chase. Doesn't this remind you of an old storybook? I don't read fairy tales. But look up ahead. Stay on this fairy's tail and we'll be within shouting distance of the castle. Thank <laughs> you. 
Demons even like Fleming? You sort of learn to fake it. He's been top demon longer than any of us can remember. A few fanatics even decided to worship him. <laughs> As if that would save them. Seriously creepy vibes. We're practically in Fleming's front yard now. Are you sure we should press on? I'm a Mexican, Johnson. Not a Mexican. Bravo, G. Highly original.
figure I'll set up here for a while. Seems like a cozy neighborhood. <laughs>
She would make that for me whenever I came back from the hunt. I know, it's your favorite. Although how you could have an appetite now is beyond me. <sighs> I am always hungry for my anhel. <laughs> Beauty is blind. Brava! Bravissima! A tidal wave of applause washed over Justine as roses rained down on the stage. It's a wonder they don't hit me, she thought bitterly. I'm the largest target for miles. After curtain down, she retired to her dressing room, set her horned Viking helmet aside and waddled up to the mirror with a gelatinous jiggle. There was a knock at the door, and Henry Wallen appeared. Henry again. Cheese, please. You were magnificent, Miss Vangelo. Did you see? The papers are calling you the finest soprano of the 19th century. He looked at the floor and shifted his feet uncomfortably. Every man in town loves you. Stupid Henry, moaned Justine as she examined her profile in the mirror. No real man could love a fat twat like me. She tried adjusting her midriff. Disgusting. She waited for the sigh, but today Henry's response was different. There was a rustle, a metallic thunk. Good evening to you, my lady. She heard the clack of the door. Justine gazed wistfully at the tintype of beautiful Bella Margot, the slender soprano she idolized in her youth. What was Bella's secret, she wondered, as she picked away at a box of truffles on the table. What indeed? A few minutes later, Justine was bent over the waste basket by the door, gagging and heaving. Eventually, she gave up and removed her finger from her throat. Then, at the bottom of the waste basket, she saw the roses and the letter, and remembered the rustle and the thunk. She opened the letter and read aloud. You have won my heart, and that is no small feat. Oh, how sweet! No small feat, she shouted in rage. A large feat, is that it? She crumpled up the note, threw it on the floor, and stopped on it for good measure. Something inside of her had snapped. From that moment forward, she was determined to never sing again. Her voice could go to hell, just as long as she could be beautiful. No one knows exactly what happened to Justine after that. Not the impresario who had begged her to come back. Not the reporters who had begged her to comment. Not Henry, who had been too crushed to face her again. Correct me if I'm wrong, G, but didn't Henry want to be crushed? I mean, come on, chubby chaser, anyone? When Justine's landlord finally let himself in... He was startled to discover a slim and beautiful woman in his tenant's armchair. She was naked, and her throat had been savaged. The blood had painted an inverse bouquet of roses on her chest. The woman held her own vocal cords in her hands. Oh, the end. Y'all take 
take care now. where I speak now instead of holding my peace. Shut up. Paula! It's really you, isn't it? You came for me. I'm so happy. I can't tell you how long I've been here. I'm sorry it took me so long, baby. Jeez, Garcia, you're here. That's what's important. Bad girl just waiting to get out. Danger, puta. 
Then put on your best dress, because tonight I am taking you out.
Check it out. I think I found a banging underground shortcut. This should take us right under the castle walls. Who's your skull, G? You are, Johnson. My numbskull. You led us right into the catacombs. <sighs> it's hot as hell in here. Yes, but it's a dry heat.
Or is this juice jockey angrier than the others? He looks ready to explode, and that's not a figure of speech.
Ugh, this reminds me of the most horrid story. A gaggle of demon hags thought they could get ahead in the world by offering to join Fleming's harem. But he was so offended by their hideousness that he ripped off their heads and used the sloppy carcasses for bowling pins. Ever since, bowling for uglies has been one of his favourite forms of torture. So instead of getting ahead, they lost ahead? This is nothing to joke about, G. Get your mind out of the gutter. Again. She's not mental. She's momentarily confused.
want to stay on the down low, but the catacombs? Well, that's crazy talk. Let me guess. I'm going to open this door again and all the demons will be gone, right? <laughs> behind that door.
What does that mean? Must be a joke from the designers. The who? I believe they're guardians of this room. Each has the ability to control a piece of the puzzle. Is there any way to shut them up? Shut me down one of their throats and I'll let you know. It smelled atrocious in there. hear you laughing now.
Gee, that's a golden shower. Well, this is as far as I go, friends. If y'all want to conduct business, now's the time.
Sugar, the exit is blocked. to be some sort of maze. This is just like when I found her. In the rubbish bin. Wouldn't there have been, you know, more garbage and less flowers? Sorry. Maybe I should have left her there. If I hadn't picked her up, Fleming would not have targeted her. He is making her suffer because of me. You don't know that. Nothing makes me angrier than realizing I only get to kill that son of a bitch once.
madre. This is what demon wet dreams are made of. Enjoy your supper. After all, it is going to be your last. <laughs> you really think you've won? I like that. And I see you decided to join our revels after all. Care for a bite of my last supper? It's low in trans fat. What are you having? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. How stupid of me. Who are you having? Why, it's your precious Paula, of course. Mm. <gasps> the skin is so soft and tender. Try some. Wait, Garcia! Don't shoot! Done. Oh no, you killed her again. How could you? <laughs> Fuck you! You are gone! You see, only the prettiest women look radiant in red. 
This woman belongs in the Lord of Demons bed. No! She will not be returning to you. Paula, you hold on for me, baby. I'm getting you out. Garcia. This meal is over. Look out, G.
Try it in the doors. We need to create an exit. <laughs> How do we get Paula to come with us? <laughs> Shoot your wings, G. Parts that are different. that are different.
It is over, Angel. Garcia. I won't. The darkness is coming. Garcia. I have already found my escape. I want to see you once again before I close my eyes. You, Garcia. I love you. Yes. I love you, Paula. We are through. This is the last stop for heaven. Hey, sleepyhead. Listening hmm? about this weekend. Oh yeah, Mexico, magnifico. Great. Let's fly to Cancun then. Spend some quality time together on the beach. Do a little intelligence gathering of our own and see if we want to settle down there. Sound good? I cannot wait to eat real Mexican food. Although the cocineros will never be able to top this caprese. <laughs> glad you like it. The tomatoes are organic, and the mozzarella is made from buffalo milk. You even made the hamburgers. Well, the hamburgers come from a um, special recipe. Really? Let's see if I can guess. I'll get it. Go ahead and pick out the hotel. <laughs> Will do. Hello? 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 You can tell so much about a man from what he puts between his buns. Some people play it straight with beef hamburgers. Others, I believe, go for pulled pork. And let's not forget that wonderful chicken breast. What kind of man are you, Hotspur? Who is this? In case you're wondering, my answer would unfortunately have to be none of the above. <laughs> After all, I am so much more than any man. I only throw human daddies on my grill. Just like I only throw human honeys on my bed. <laughs> Garcia, you're taking too long. We're still eating. Back to your seat. Oops. <laughs> Shit. Paula, let's book that hotel fast, huh? Before they get here. Yes, let's. Uh-oh. It's raining. You have no idea. They're coming, G. Too late to book that hotel, huh? No! No! Garcia! No! No! Here we go again. My name is Garcia Hotspur, hunter of demons. Fate has led me to fall in love with the Lord of the Underworld's mistress. His horde of minions will never stop coming to claim her. But I have sworn to strike them down, each and every one, until she is mine alone. I will take on the whole world if I must. Slay every creature in my path. Because I still see love in her eyes. And because I love killing fucking demons. Ready?
ready, G. Always. Sorry, Paula. Mako will have to wait. What's our life? Demon keeps a dreaming of a demon town. Motherfucker, bitch, fuck, shit went down. Fleming's got an itch, scratch it with a bitch. Demon keeps a dreaming of a demon town. Ooh, Johnson, that's my name. Big penis, that's my game. Johnson, yeah, Johnson, ooh, Johnson, everywhere, yeah. Motherfucker, bitch, fuck, shit went down. Ha, ha, in the darkness, we shall have fun. Talk about my Johnson, talk about my bum. Talk about my thighs, they're really good in size. Oh my goodness, I can't believe my eyes, cause Fleming's got an itch. Scratch it with a bitch. Demon keeps on dreaming of a demon town. Motherfucker, bitch, cock, cunt went down with a demon, demon town.